before we listen to the word, let us bow our heads and look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord, for having gathered us in this way. Father, we believe that your word will quicken us, will revive us. Your word will comfort us, chastise us. Father, we depend upon your word. Even now, Lord, we, I pray that you will put the appropriate words in my mouth. Whatever I say, may it redound to your glory. Bless your people, Lord. All that we ask, all that we need is your word. For believe, we believe your word that says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Father, we need a direct encounter from you. From you. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you, Lord. Speak to us. Let your name alone be glorified. We pray that you will, that Lord, you will work out a mighty work in the midst of us. Lord, we come against all the evil works in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we take victory in Jesus' name. We take victory in Jesus' name. To this and we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are really happy in the presence of God? The thought that I want to share with you is, the title is, the winning race. The winning race. Let's turn, to our, turn our Bibles to the key text that, we, that, is, that was displayed just a while ago. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. Whole of yesterday night I thought, what if this wasn't the word from the Lord? I was really disturbed in my mind. I said, Lord, you must confirm this. I don't have anybody, any source to confirm and as we were singing the chorus part, the first song in the secret, in the quiet place, the second part of the, the second verse of the chorus says, I am reaching for the highest goal that I might receive the price, pressing onward, pushing every hindrance aside out of my way because I want to know you more. These words, this stanza confirmed my message. This has all the three points that I want to present before you. I believe I know for sure this is the word from the Lord to us. And I am sure that the Lord will minister through these words. And I, I pray that you will take these words just from the Lord. And never ignore even one single word, one single truth from what you are going to hear this morning. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. Shall we all read it together? 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Here we go. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. Dear child of God, the Lord is reminding us about our spiritual run. The Lord has started the race. The Bible says he is the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he starts the race and he will be there at the end point to receive us. But we have to run in between. The race that we have to run in between from start to finish, it is upon our, it, it is our responsibility, it is on our shoulders. Probably you might have come into the presence of God. Lord, what am I supposed to do? The Lord says, run your race. Never quit, never stop. Elijah thought, let me die here, Lord. I don't want to live anymore. The Lord said, arise, Elijah. You have to go through a long distance. You have to Travels through a long distance. Probably some of you might have come thinking every is, everything is done. Everything is over. There's no chance. There's no chance of you getting revived. or There's no hope for you to carry on in your spiritual life. Or carry on to your, go on to your destiny. You may say everything is stopped. Everything is blocked. I have no hope to move forward. This morning the Lord says, run. Never quit. Run until you may, until you obtain. Look at the last phrase, the last phrase of this verse. So run that you may obtain. Dear child of God, the Lord says, my son, my daughter, I have started the race. My plan is that you finish it. I give you the needed source, needed resource. That is my grace so that you will finish well. The children of Israel in the book of, in the times of Elijah, they could not run. They were, they were called to run, but the circumstances and the situation that they were in forced them to not to run. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, 
Elijah pours out his heart. We all know this context. These, these Israelites, these, these children of Israel, they, they followed the Lord as well as Baal. And because of that, they could not run. The moment we fix our eyes on the Lord, we receive the strength to run our race. But the moment we shift our focus from the Lord and concentrate on something else that is that is quite contrary to the, to the Lord. We lose our strength. And that, that's, that's what happened in this case in the, the, with the people of Israel. Elijah says, how long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, serve him. If Baal be the Lord, be God, serve him. And this morning the Lord says, my son, my daughter, never focus your attention on something else. Never concentrate on anything else. Concentrate on me. If you concentrate on the Lord, you will run. The moment you have two, two targets or two, two things right before you, you begin to halt between two opinions. This morning the Lord says, run. Would you bless somebody saying, the race is not yet over, you have to run. The Lord is there to grant you the grace. The Lord grants you the grace to run well. Dear child of God, never think about quitting. Probably you might have come into the presence of God. What if this condition prevails for a long time? What will happen if this situation goes on like this? I may not, I may not survive. My hope, my dreams, my vision, the promises of God may not get fulfilled. I may die, die before, soon before the promise is fulfilled. This morning God says, it is not over until you run. You need to run. Dear child of God, God says in Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 5, the Lord you know, brings out the stand, the, the calling of his people. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 5, the Lord says, If you have run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, how will you run with the horses? We all know this verse, very well known verse. The Lord is asking us, the Lord is asking us to do something extraordinary. If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how can you, thou contend with the horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trusted, they wearied thee, then how will thou do in the swelling of Jordan? The Lord is telling you, you may face, you are going to face, you are going to face People who are going to weary you. You are going to face swelling of Jordan. But this morning the Lord says, I will give you the strength. What does, what does David say? By the Lord, I will run through a troop and I will re leap over a wall. This morning the Lord says, you may be facing Jordan, swelling up Jordan. You may be facing people speaking against you, discouraging words. And you are not able to move a f step forward. And you are really weighed down by the comments, by the, by the rumors people spread about you. This morning God says, what I say of you, what I think of you, what I pronounce about you is what, you, is, is what matters. We don't live by human opinions. We live by God's approval. Somebody say amen. If you are a person who lives by the approval of God, you will never quit your spiritual race. You will start progressing. Hallelujah. In 1968 in Mexico Olympics, there was a marathon race that can never be forgotten. Never be forgotten, not because of the one who won the gold medal or the silver or the bronze, but because of the one who came last. He was Stephen, John Stephen Akhwari. He was from Tanzania and he was a man who was chosen by his nation to represent his country there in Olympics, Mexico, 1968. And as he, was, as he was running with the contenders, they pushed him down. He dashed against the wall and he hurt his knees and he hurt his leg and he couldn't move even one step forward and the medical attendants they 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 took care of him they put all sorts of bandages and they asked him why can't you quit quit now and he said no i'm not quitting now and he started running he started running till he till he finished the race when he finished the race the you know the history says the race was over it was past one and a half hours from the time the gold medalist received his medal. And everything was shut down. And for this one man, the stadium lights were on. Everybody was there. You know, everybody was there in the sense of people who did not want to consider this one man finished. They left. But, what, you know, people who wanted to appreciate him, they stayed there. When he entered the stadium, always cheering up, always shouting, shouting his name. And when he finished his line, he didn't finish first. But he finished well. And this is what God says. My son, my daughter. 
I'm not asking you to finish first. I'm asking you to finish well. What does the Lord say? What does the Lord call? How does the Lord call those servants? Well done, thou faithful servant. This is what God expects from us. And that man, when he was interviewed by the people, by the reporters, they asked him, why didn't you quit? He said, my country did not send me here 5,000 miles just to end this race. My country sent me here 5,000 miles from my country to finish this race. Finish this race. This morning the Lord says, finish your race. Never worry about what people say about you. Think about your calling. The Lord did not choose you to run this race so that you will, you, you will quit in the middle way. Think about a country that senses athletes, that senses, you know, the sportsmen. They don't choose somebody who, who is a novice to the sport, who, who a person who doesn't qualify. They pick out the best ones from their country and send them to the Olympics to represent their country. Dear child of God, if God has chosen you, you may be insig insignificant before others. If God has chosen you, that means he has seen something in you that no one has ever seen. Probably you might have not known anything about you. If you say, brother, I did not choose my God. It was God who chose me. That simply shows that God has seen something potential within you. The Lord has not chosen you for no reason. The Lord has chosen you for something special. The Lord wants you to move ahead, move forward, reach your goal, press on towards your destiny and claim victory in Jesus' name. How many of you are here to declare, Lord, I will never quit in the middle way. Dear child of God, if you don't consider the way in which you've been called by the Lord, you will surely fall down. If you know that the Lord has called you, if you know for sure that you heard the call of God, if you know for sure that the Lord has chosen you, let me tell you this morning through the, through the assurance of the word of God, the Lord has seen something special inside of you. People might have despised, despised you in the past. Maybe, maybe you are going through a uh, you know, period of rejection from others. Probably you are going through troublesome times and you are facing struggles all along the way. And this morning God says, I have seen something special in you. This is the greatest privilege. This is the greatest privilege. Dear child of God, you know, God is interested in our end more than our beginning. Somebody say Good start is not important if you don't end well. Somebody say, good start is not important if you don't end well. God wants us to end well. God blows the whistle and starts the race. And he's the one who is going to help us finish and receive us on the final day. Dear child of God, tell the Lord this morning. Lord, I trust your grace. I will move forward. I will move forward. Recently, Brother Mike sent me an article. That really touched my heart. Let me read it for you. The wealthiest places on earth are not oil fields of the Middle East, nor the diamond mines of South Africa, but the cemeteries there buried are businesses that were never formed, songs never sung, books that were never written, potentials never realized, dreams never came to pass. They did not finish their race. They wanted to start. But they couldn't finish, dear child of God. This should never be said of us, said any one of us present here. We need, to pro we need to progress. We need to march on. We need to step out in faith and achieve the goal that the Lord has for us. Think about the way how the Lord brought the people of Israel out from Egypt. The Lord started the race for them. He fought against the Egyptian spirits. He delivered them from out of the hand of Pharaoh. And he parted the Red Sea. And he led them through the wilderness. Where he, the Lord gave them the word. The Lord sent the servants. Moses and Aaron. They performed all sorts of miracles. Just to take them to the promised land. The Lord did not bring them out. To take them back to Egypt. The Lord brought them out. To possess the promised land. But unfortunately they could not possess it. Because they failed to realize. What the Lord wanted them to do. They failed to realize they fail to understand what God asked them to do this morning the Lord says hold on to what I say hold on to my dream tell somebody sitting next to you dear brother dear sister tell somebody come on church tell somebody tell somebody who is whom you feel really tired now 
Tell somebody. Hold on to your God. Hold on to what he says. I was really impressed about the life of John the Baptist. Would you look at, would you look at that verse? Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 verse 25. I want you, everybody to look at this verse. Probably for some, of, for some this is going to be something new. Acts 13, 25. We all think, you know, we may think that John the Baptist died a premature death. Probably he didn't serve the Lord as much as we would have thought. He died as a martyr. He did not live long. But look at the, what, the Bible says, what the Bible says about John, John the Baptist. Acts of the Apostle chapter 13 verse 25. Let's read from verse 24. And when John the, had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Look at what verse 25 says. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. Would you read it for me? The first part of verse 25. And as John fulfilled his course. And this is what God is telling us. It's, long, it's not how long we are going to live. It's all about how we are going to finish. He didn't live long. Yes, true. Probably you might have served just for six months. But he fulfilled his course. He, he fulfilled his race. The course, the word course mentions, it speaks about an athlete running in a race. He finished his race. When he finished this race, he says, he said, Whom think he that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. Do you know what we understand? He finished his race, then he was martyred. Dear child of God, how are you going to finish? The life is too short than we think. It is too short than we think. Every day when we march on to the next day, we are inching one day closer to our death. Are we fulfilling the ministry? Are we fulfilling the race? Are we completing the race that the Lord has called us to accomplish? Do you know something? God has a one year plan for us. One month plan for us. One week and one day plan for us. He has one hour, one minute, one second plan. Do you know what I say? God has a calendar in it with him that the, the calendar, in, in that calendar, he has appointed certain things that we have to do. And that's the reason why the Lord is behind us every now and then saying, my son, do this. My son, do that. The Lord wakes us up every morning and thinking, expecting us to do, fulfill his will so that we will complete his race. Look at this man, um, you know, John the Baptist. He did not live long. Probably he died at the age of, you know, just 30, 30, 30 years old. 30 years old because Jesus fulfilled his, you know, completed his ministry 33 and a half years. That's 33 old, 30 years old young man fulfilling the race that God has asked him. The thing that I want to present before you, it is not how long we live in this world, but how we finish the race that the Lord has asked us to run. How about us? Think about David in the same chapter, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22. The Lord says, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill my will. The Lord says, he shall fulfill my will. Did he really fulfill his will? That is the billion dollar question. What does the Bible say in the same chapter, verse 36? Same, same chapter, verse 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God... He fell on sleep. By the, you know, look at the verse, you know, the, this probably the, the second line of King James Version, chapter 3, verse 36. After he had served his own generation by the will of God, before he could face his death, before he could close his eyes, before he could breathe his last breath, the Bible says he fulfilled his race. The Lord said he will fulfill and David fulfilled. The thought is this, before we could close our eyes, before we could breathe our last, we are called to fulfill the race that God has called us.
That is the greatest success that you and I can ever face. The greatest success is not building a three bedroom bungalow or a, buying a BW, BMW car. The greatest success in the life of a child of God is fulfilling the will of God. That is the greatest success. How many of us has, have this desire? Lord, I want to fulfill your will in my life, in my marriage, in my job, in my ministry, in my young life. I want to fulfill your will. Before my time comes, Lord, I want to fulfill. Dear child of God, it will be a pathetic condition if we go to heaven without fulfilling the purpose of God in our lives. Are we fulfilling? Are we running our race? Do you know something? When an athlete runs... Everybody in the stadium watches him. Everybody cheers him up when he goes forward. Dear child of God, everyone watches over us. How we conduct, how we walk in this world. The Lord has kept us as his ambassadors. And he has asked us to run the race. Reflect, you know, exhibiting the nature, his nature. Through us. And he has made us his representatives. The Lord Lived 2,000 years ago, you know, when, before 2,000 you know, 2, years ago, he lived in this world. And he said, I am the light of this world. When he departed from this world, he said, you are the light of this world. You have to run. Show for the light to the unbelievers, unconverted people. Let them see Christ through us. Let, them, let us run the race that God has called us to run. How many of us can tell the Lord? Lord, I, will, I decide in your presence to fulfill the race. Complete the race before my last second. Before I don't want to leave this earth without doing or without fulfilling your purpose, Lord. How many of us can decide in the presence of God? This morning, Lord, it's not how long I'm going to live. It's how I'm going to finish my race. The purpose that you have for me. The destinies that you want me to achieve. I want to fulfill it, Lord. I want to fulfill it. You know something? For each one of us, the Lord has set a track. It differs from person to person. For John the Baptist, it was just 30 years of lifespan. For David, 70 years. For, for our Lord Jesus Christ, 33 and of years. He, for each, you know, each of the person you know, that, we, that, we, that we read, you know, for John the Baptist and David, Different lifespans were they fulfilled. Each of us, each of us, ha God has ordained a separate track. If you are the head of the, your house, you have a separate track. And the wife of the house, she has a separate track. And the children, they have a separate track. Look at what the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. The last part, Hebrews 12, 1, the last part. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That is set. That is set. Look at the word set. Each one of us is set a track by the Lord. A track that we need to travel. What I want to say is never look at others track. You have your own track. You have to, you have to run through, run in that track. It differs from person to person. And that's why the Bible says, that's why, the, that's why Apostle Peter says, make your, make your calling and your election sure. Make your calling and your election. Two different words that Peter uses. One is calling, the other one is election. Calling is general way that the Lord calls. But election is a specific track that we have to run the race. The specific track. And the Bible says, if you do these things, you shall never fail. Look at this verse. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. If you have your Bibles, would you look at that verse? The last phrase of 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Let's read the whole verse. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. If you do these things, you shall never fall. You shall never fall in the sense. You shall never be without completing your race. First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10. If you do these things, you shall never fall. The child of God. The billion dollar question is, are you running in your track? If you're calling a Sunday school teacher, stick on to that. If I'm, if, you know, this is my humble you know, belief. If my God has called me 
to just to play guitar he wouldn't ask me on that day when i stand before him why you didn't sing the lord will say did you play guitar that is what i have asked you to do what i want to say is the lord has set a track for us we have to find it out and run and the spirit of god within us always urges us always positions us in the track that god has set for us and uh, other people are not our content contenders what is our content you know do you know we the, before our lifespan we have to finish the race well and that is what god expects from us dear child of god everyone present here if you are really fire in the lord if you are really serious about your spiritual life this is for you and if there's anybody here in this place who says brother i'm sinking i'm not in the lord i know i have a christian name i attend church but i don't have fellowship with the lord as much as you expect or people think or people have opinion about me this morning god says everyone here in this place the word of the lord comes to you it is not over the lord has still faith on you if you are sitting downstairs brother you know downstairs is only for the elders who cannot climb up and for parents who have little children and if you are a youngster if if you have determined to sit down this is the word from the lord to you never take your spiritual race you know casually take your spiritual race seriously every time you every time you encounter a day the lord is giving you a fresh page so that you can fulfill everything that god has for you if you have not done something in the past if you have failed to fulfill what the lord has asked you to fulfill make haste fulfill it before the time ends we do not know how 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 your our, our future is going to be how our days ahead of us are going to be but the one fact one thing that the lord wants to drive into our mind and hearts is my son my daughter fulfill finish your race before the time comes the thought is this finish your race successfully the the title is the the winning race god has called us to win the race not to lose it not to lose it i want to share with you three thoughts that bless my heart as quickly as possible from these from this passage in you know, first corinthians chapter 9 verses 24 to 27 number 1 number 1 the first point is the focus the focus first corinthians 924 number 2 the forego the forego number 3 the faith the faith that each one of us need to have number 1 the focus how many of us how many of us are really attentive in the while listening to the word really attentive would you shout amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah bless somebody sitting next to you you're going to win the race you're going to win the race praise the lord praise the lord number 1 verse 24 know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the price but one receiveth the price praise the lord only one receives the price who is our price who is our price i'm asking you who is our price our lord jesus christ our focus should be on the price when our focus is on the price we will do everything to move towards the finish line worldly people they have their own you know focus the name the fame the wealth the treasures but to a child of god to a bride of christ the bridegroom lord jesus christ is the object of focus never change the object of your focus the, you know this is this is this is really really dangerous this is really really dangerous when you change your focus when you change your focus you will begin to side track or probably you will you will begin to come into the track of someone else you know people who cross the track they too have the same mark we all know in tokyo olympics shiny wilson a great a brighter prospect for indian uh, medal position in athletics she ran that race but she got disqualified because she did not run in the track that was assigned for her nobody knew it until the camera found it out 
I remember when I was in eighth standard, I was, we were running 200 meters. One of my friends, he was there, you know, in the right in front of the curve. One of my friends, Rajshek. And we were running the race and I came third. I came third. And this guy, he crossed the line and he came first. My PT sir found it out and he said, Rajshek, you crossed the line, you are disqualified. And we all know, we, all, we were all friends. We said, come on sir, let him have the first prize. Now we are all friends. You know, we can, we can convince the people, but we can never convince the camera. When I say camera, God is watching over us. The Lord is watching over us. When we fail to focus on the Lord, we will begin to sidetrack. You know, people who sidetrack or people who cross their line, they too have the same focus. But the thing is, that if they fail to keep their eye on their focus, on the on the on the goal, they begin to sidetrack. In the Bible, we read about a, a young rich ruler. He had his he had great possessions, and the Lord said, the Lord said, and the, he asked the Lord, Lord, what shall I do to inherit the eternal life? The Lord said, Go and sell all your possessions and follow me. Do you know what the Lord said? You have fixed your eyes on the possessions that you have. Sell it off. Take it away. Take away the, all the possessions. And fix your focus on me. And that's why the Lord says, follow me. What did the Lord mean, really mean? Follow me. We read this passage, you know, Mark's Gospel chapter 10, uh, verses 21 to 24. Well, we all know this passage. We need not go into it. But the thought that I want you to, want you to ponder over is this. Why did the Lord say, follow me? The Lord said, focus on me. But this young man, he went away with grief because his eyes was on the riches. Do you know something? These riches, God gave. Sometimes when God gives us riches, God blesses us, we should not focus on our blessings. Those focus, those blessings should not rob away our devotion that we have on the Lord. God blesses us graciously, dear child of God. If you are in the presence of God, if you are really blessed by the Lord, where is your focus? Is your focus on the Lord? Is your blessing, is your job, is your salary drawing you out away from your time with God? Your quiet time with God, with your quiet time with the Bible, with the word of God. This morning, fix your eyes, take your eyes off. Take your focus off from the blessings. Concentrate on the Lord. If you concentrate on the Lord, taking your eyes off from your job, from your blessings, from your salary, from all the privileges that you can ever enjoy in your life and focus it, you will, you will, you will run a winning race. This young man, he was given a wonderful opportunity to win the race. But he failed because his focus was not on the Lord, even though the Lord told him, follow me. What did the Lord say? Follow me. Fix your eyes. Fix your focus on me. Dear child of God, probably you heard the Lord calling you. Probably 15, 20 years. Probably you ran that race for the, you know, when, you know probably 10 years, 15 years. But now it is everything, everything is standstill. Everything is over. Right now, the Lord gives you a call. As just as how the Lord, you know, encourage Elijah. Elijah, arise, arise. And you have a race to run. This morning, the Lord says, if you have quit running, probably the ministry that the Lord has called you, probably the task that the Lord, probably the burden that the Lord put in you, probably the prophetic utterance that came upon you regarding the ministry that you are, that you are, that the Lord wanted you to do probably you know you heard the Lord you heard the herds you had the burden within yourself you had the the fire you know you know you know trying to quench every you know distractions in your life this morning God says step out in faith start once again I have a plan for you focus on me never focus on the blessings never let your blessings God given blessings Deviate you from the focus that God has asked you to focus. Think about Peter. The Lord said, Peter, now you're young. You're going to be old someday. And you will be taken to a place that you don't desire. And the Lord was telling him all these things. Now he, see, now he sees John, 
the apostle coming behind now he side tracks and he, and he says lord what about him do you know what the lord said let's read that verse john's gospel chapter 21 verse 22 john's gospel chapter 21 verse 22 jesus saith unto him if i will that he tarry till i come what is that to thee follow thou me do you know what the lord said focus on me never focus on your brother never even focus on your brother he is in the lord never try to run his life his race focus on the lord run your race if you try to focus on john peter if you try to focus on john you're going to fall you're not going to finish focus on me the lord said follow me you know look at me focus on me an athlete who wants to win the race his focus is on the destiny on the goal the lord has asked him to, dear child of god the lord says focus on the price focus on the price focus on the what is you know look at what apostle paul says philippians chapter 3 verse 14 philippians 3 14 we all know this verse yet let us turn our bibles and look at this verse philippians 3 14 i press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus i press toward the mark for the prize of high calling he says i focus i focus toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus he had you know in this philippians chapter 3 verse 14 he was encountering so many things so many things he was beaten you know he was persecuted look at what all he says look at what what all he says verse 7 verse 7 philippians chapter 3 verse 7 but what things were gained to me i counted loss for christ yeah doubtless i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord of for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that i may win christ win christ verse 9 and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of christ and the righteousness which is of god by faith that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death by if by any means i might attain unto the resurrection of the dead not as though i had already attained either but already perfect but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which also i am apprehended of christ jesus brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind reaching forth unto those things which are before i press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus he says i have fixed my focus on the prize did he win did he finish the race what did he say what did what did he say in second timothy chapter 4 i fought a good fight i have finished my course kept my faith he finished to it all because he focused his focus hallelujah dear child of god focus on the lord focus on the prize the enemy is all out to distract you deviate you from your vision from your dream from the ministry that the lord has asked you to do from the task that god has ordained for you focus on your goal focus on your goal focus on your goal how many of us are willing to focus our eyes on the lord the price how many of us i wish everyone here present here decides lord i stop all giving i stop giving all these unwanted excuses i focus on my race let me continue lord run well and finish well let me focus on you think about the way how god how jesus focused how jesus focused hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 hebrews 12 look at how jesus focused hebrews 12 to 
looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross look at the focus of Jesus who for the joy that was set before him what was the joy what was the joy yes the salvation our salvation any other answer what was the joy that was set before him the bride of christ is bride but actually you know what was in what was before him the cross was before him that's what the bible says who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross the cross was before him but he did not set his eyes on the cross he set his eyes on the bride the salvation of souls your salvation and my salvation look at the focus the that for this reason jesus came into this world why did jesus come into this world and die on the cross finish his race what was the reason his reason was that he purchases his bride you and i are his bride and that is what is expected from us that is what is expected from us do you know what was the last word last words of jesus what was the last words of jesus on the cross it is finished that's what our english bible or tamil bible says but the hebrew bible the hebrew word the root word for that it is finished it is kalal kalal if you understand the root word of kalal the word, root word is kala kala means bright when he said it is finished he said my bright and this one reason made jesus to finish this race if we have our focus on our bridegroom no matter what struggle we go through no matter what cross that we have to carry on we will complete it you know something dear child of god god had you and me in his mind when he was hanging on the tree that one thought and that one reason for one for that one purpose he endured the cross despising the shame he endured the cross are we willing to are we willing to focus on the that's what the bible says in hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and verse 2 what does the bible say hebrews chapter 1 chapter 12 verse 1 would you turn your bible i think you are you are there hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and sin which that so easily but let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus please underline the word looking unto jesus and verse 3 for consider him looking unto jesus and consider him the you know the greek definition of the word for the for the words you know looking and and consider looking is this to turn the eyes from something else and focus look looking means the the greek meaning of the word looking is to turn your eyes from something else and focus on your purpose focus on the goal looking and for for the word for the word consider for the word consider consider means think every now and then think every now and then for the word consider the greek meaning is think every now and then if you do these things you will be successful in your spiritual race that's what the writer to the hebrew says in verse 3 the second part of verse 3 for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest you be wearied and faint in your minds what does it mean if you don't look at the lord if you don't consider the lord if you don't think about him if you don't focus on him when weariness comes against you when 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 you are re- when you feel really discouraged in your mind you will become a victim to it 
when you if you only consider on the lord if you look at the lord when weariness comes when fainting comes and attacks you you will not fall down rather you will succeed where is your focus where is your focus i know you are going through tough times carrying the reproaches for a long time probably nobody understands what you are going through but let your minds be on the lord tell the lord lord i will not fix my eyes on the miracle that i'm waiting for i will fix my eyes i will focus on you only then i can be successful dear child of god do you know the best way to overcome depression do you know what is the only remedy to overcome you know failures in our mind do you know something this is failing here in the mind that's a greatest task that's a difficult most difficult task if you sick in your body if you get sick in your body fine you can go to the physician but if you get sick here in your mind it's very very difficult to diagnose and it's very difficult to heal and you know what the bible says what the bible gives the remedy that the bible gives verse 3 the first part for consider him how we endured he had you and me in his mind when we go through struggles when i say struggles you know it is also it, it the struggles in our spiritual life and the enemy tries to entice us with so many things unwanted things trying to dis- distract us from the focus we need to have in our mind lord you had me in your mind you also had me in your words the last ever word spoken on the cross i will also have you in my mind at any cost lord i will focus on you i will focus on you i will focus on you how many of us can tell the lord i will focus on the lord think about this thing i may be repeating what, you know never mind he had you and me the cross was before me but he ignored it his focus was the bright probably that is what is expected from us i wouldn't say probably that is you know that is the only thing that god wants us to do ignore all the other things focus on our, on your bridegroom you will finish your race the second thought is this the four go the four go verse 25 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 25 and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible shall we all read it together shall we all you know when you read let at least two or three people should hear what you read read it as loud as possible so that you can wake up a person sitting next to you first corinthians 9:25 Here we go ahead. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Forego is the immediate step next to focus on the Lord. Foregoing means to eliminate anything and everything that stops us from attaining the prize. That's why the Bible says every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate. for the word temperate i use the word forego foregoing means you know in our mind it starts with our mind and it's the, it carries on it it goes to the next step of with our actions for every outside victory there should be inside victory when i say inside victory when we take victory in our mind in our spirit we can take victory outside and people who are temperate people who have self control they can be successful and they will be they will be running a winning race the lord is telling us forego every unwanted thing be temperate the greatest enemy that david faced in all his life wasn't goliath whom all feared but his own you know self control to which he lost miserably self control is one of the aspect of the fruit of the spirit 
That's what we find in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, verse tw verses 22, I mean, verses 22, 23. If you count or if you, you know, list out the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, at the end, at the bottom, this, you know, temperance comes as the summation of all those that is mentioned in, mentioned from 1 to 8. The result of all those 1 to 8 is temperance. The ninth one is temperance, self-control. The one who, who, you know, the one who has this self-control will surely finish his race well, foregoing. And to elaborate that, he says, Paul says in verse 24, Galatians chapter 5 verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified their flesh with the affections and lust. They that are Christ. If you and I are called to be the bride of Christ, we have to forego those things. We have, we have to forego those things that stops us, that weighs us down from achieving the goal or finishing the race. Self-control. Self-control. Look at the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. The fruit of the Spirit. The one who walks in the Spirit will be a temperate person. A person who has self-control. The Bible says, if you walk in the Spirit, if you have the fruit of the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, you shall overcome the flesh. You shall not fulfill fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, you will fulfill the race. You will fulfill the race. I was reading it to an illustration. There was a young eagle. You know, youthful eagle. It was eyeing a big fish that was on the pond. For a long time it was eyeing that fish. And it found a right time and it came down, swooping, swooping down and pounced on that big fish and started to climb up. As it was trying to climb up, it was struggling very hard. In a faraway distance, he found a group of crows watching all these things. So long these crows, they were afraid of this young eagle. Young eagle. Now, when these crows saw that this eagle was really struggling hard, they wanted to take revenge on this young eagle. Because every time this, you know, when every time this, this crow, they found a prey, there was this eagle there, snatching away. Now they wanted to take revenge on them. And they went all, you know, went out all, you know, speedily to attack the eagle. And this eagle found that these crows were coming towards her. And she started screaming, uh, trying to threaten them, you know, she tried to threaten those crows, but they, they were not bothered about it. They knew that this eagle is as now caught as, as now you know caught in between the last the, the the desire to have this fish, and it's you know reaching up to the top to the nest, and these crows as they were going towards and this this you know eagle thought now the time has come, whether or not to leave this fish. When it decided to leave the fish, when the fish fell down, the crows could not attack, attack this eagle. They went away from it. The thought is this. What is that that you are clinging, that you are struggling in your life, that is robbing away your strength, that you are not able to climb up, reach out to your place of safety, that you are not able to resist Resist the enemy. Those enemies that you resisted once, very easily. Those enemies that you resisted very easily. They have become a potential threat to your spiritual life. Forgo that. Probably that one desire. One wrong relationship. One wrong friendship. Stopping you from achieving your goal. Throw it out in Jesus name. Throw it out in Jesus name. Tell the Lord, I'm going to forego all these things, Lord. Think about the Israelites. The Lord had a tremendous plan 
of taking them to the promised land but why did they fail why did they die in the wilderness it's because they did not they could not they would not forego they would not forego they would not forego first corinthian chapter 10 verses 1 to 5 we all know this verse nevertheless let us turn the bible and look at this these these verses first corinthian chapter 10 verses 1 to 5 have you taken it first corinthian chapter 10 verses 1 to 5 could i hear a amen from you if you have taken it okay moreover brethren i would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and are passed through the sea that were all baptized unto moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them how many times all is mentioned you know my bible four times four times all our fathers all baptized all eat and all drink look at verse 5 but with many of them god was not well pleased but with many of the majority of them died all took baptism all took part in holy communion all were in fellowship in the church but all did not enter the promised land do you know what was the reason lack of self control lack of temperance was 6 look at verse 6 of 1st corinthians chapter 10 now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted they would not forego they could not forget the taste of egyptian food when the mixed multitude cried for meat the children of israel they joined with them they they cried out for meat they said manna is not manna is useless to us tasteless to us we need meat dear child of god the lord is speaking about the distractions distractions what is that that is trying to pull you down distract you what is that fish you have the strength within you to face all the evil attacks but now you have become powerless before the same evil attacks what is the reason are you holding on to that fish your own desire your own plan your own self will your self will is against your purpose your self will is the reason for your lust your self will is against this forego tell the lord lord i kill my self will to accept your plan i don't want my self will i don't want my self will do you know why did they thirst why did the children of israel thirst the quails that they ate they experienced made them to thirst the lord gave them manna one of the bible scholars writes like this when manna when it becomes when during the new noon time the manna becomes semi solid food that quench the thirst morning they ate manna afternoon manna and night manna the bible says in psalm 105 was 40 the people asked and he brought quails and satisfy them with the bread of heaven quails did not satisfy them but the bread of heaven manna satisfied them quails was their self will if you look at the book of leviticus and list when you find out the list of the birds animals that one should eat and one should not eat you can never find this quail there in that list quail is the an, you know is a bird that doesn't come under good list or the bad list the neutral something that is neutral what you decide yourself your self will may say i didn't choose evil 
that the Bible says. Yourself will say, I didn't choose something that the Bible prohibits, forbids. I have chosen something neutral. Even that neutral will not satisfy you. Only the will of God. Only the bread of heaven, manna shall satisfy you. Your self-will is against this forego. And if you don't have this temperance, you cannot finish well. Throw it away in Jesus' name. And all those people who ate this quail for a month died at the end. But people who survived, who lived on manna, lived long. Dead child of God. If you are a person sitting in the presence of God. Having two choices right against you. Your self will or God's will concerning your studies. Concerning your job. And if there is anyone here present here. Regarding you are facing conflicts of interest. Regarding your job. And if you, if you know your job is hindering you from reaching out to God. If your job is hindering you from fulfilling the purpose that God has for you. The Lord is telling you right now. Never choose quails. Choose manna. Choose manna. Never focus on money. Concentrate on the presence of God. Focus on the presence of God. Bible says, seek the Lord first. And His righteousness and all these things shall be added. The only thing that we need to focus, the only thing that, that we need to concentrate if there's one thing, there's one thing that we need to forego all other things, it is the price. It is the price. Canaan bound people buried, were buried in the wilderness. Galatian church, they started in the spirit, they ended in flesh. And Paul pours out his heart in chapter 3, verse. Verse 3, Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in spirit, and are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You did run well. Chapter 5, verse 7. You did run well. Who hindered you that you should not obey the truth? Disobedience to the truth alone is the fuel. Is the fuel. Disobedience to the truth Alone is the fuel that helps your ruin. Obedience to the word of God grants us the strength to overcome every temptation, to forego every distraction, to be temperate, to have self-control. In 2 Timothy chapter three, chapter 2 verse 3, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 and verse 5, Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. No man that warreth entangleth himself. He doesn't get, he doesn't get into addiction. He doesn't get into you know, lust. He has self-control. How does he have, how does he have the self-control. Verse 5. If a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned ex except he strive. What is the last word? Lawfully. Lawfully. He says, Paul says, if you strive according to, if you fight according to the word of God, you will not get disqualified. You will not disqualify. All that you need in your life is the word. When I say word, sometimes the word is directly opposite to our self-will. We need to throw away your self-will. If you want to win, be temperate in all things. Be temperate in all things. Be temperate in all things. In all things. Why is that? Why should we be temperate in all things? Paul gives us a wonderful explanation. The last part of verse 25. 1 Corinthians 9.25. 1 Corinthians chapter 9.25. Why should we be temperate in all things? Shall we all read this verse? Could I get your permission? 
Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 9.25 And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible. Why am I foregoing all these things? Worldly lusts. Because I am heavenly bound. I am spiritually minded person. I am not earthly person. I am fighting this fight. I am, I am foregoing all these things so that I will inherit a crown that is incorruptible. Incorruptible. Do you know who will have a heart to forego all these things? Only a person who is spiritually minded. What did Esau say? What can this birthright do to me? He had spiritual blessing with him. He despised the birthright. Why? He was not careful about his spiritual life. He wasn't bothered about eternal things. Why are we temperate in all these things? In, in all. Why are we temperate in all? Because we are spiritually minded. This earthly life is temporary. There's a life beyond Eternal life. Dear child of God. I'm urged by the Lord to tell you. Never forfeit heaven for few lusts. For few pleasures of sin. Never forfeit your bridegroom. Never lose your spiritual life. The Lord has shed his precious blood. And he gave his life to redeem you and me. But if we only forego, if we only concentrate on earthly things, just as our yeast are yeast for a just pot of, pot of porridge and lentils, he sold his birthright. He said, what good does this birthright do to me? What about Demas in the Bible? 2 Timothy chapter 4. We all know this verse. We need not turn our Bibles. Having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. Keep eternity in your mind. Let heavenly things. Let heaven be. Heaven be. Let heaven be in your mind. Focus on heavenly things. Why are we temperate in all things? All things. Because we fight. We run to obtain an incorruptible crown. Incorruptible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Think about Joseph. He had privileges. He had status. He tells Pharaoh's, you know, Potiphar's wife saying, My master has exalted me. I'm the number one here. Except you, my master has given me all. Having said all these things, he had, you know, blessed privilege. Status, prosperity. But he says, how can I sin against my God? His mind was on eternal things, heavenly things. It wasn't on the earthly things. He knew very well, if, he's go, if he says no to, the, to her, he will, he will stand up. He will end up in the, on the road. He knew very well. He knew that his survival will be inevitably disastrous. But still, but still, he said no. He had temperance, he had self-control. He was willing to forego. Because his mind was on heavenly things. If you are seated in the presence of God, thinking about less, thinking about less on eternal things. Take your spiritual life seriously. Don't be like Demas. Don't be like Esau. Both had wonderful privileges. To be with Apostle Paul. To be trained under, under Apostle Paul. That was the greatest thing. That was the greatest privilege. But this man lost. He lost for, for having loved the present world. Not on the eternal. He, he did not concentrate on the eternal things. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Fogo. Fogo. What is that is holding you? I'm, I, you know, I'm led by, you know, I'm, I'm urged within me to sp spend few time, you know, few minutes on, on this thought. Forgo for God. Throw it away in Jesus' name. Dear young boy, young girl, if something is trying to distract you, throw it away in Jesus' name. Be it a relationship, be it a friendship, be it anything, throw it away in Jesus' name. That stops you from achieving your success. Say, Lord, I love you more than all these things. I need you. I need your purpose. I want to fulfill your purpose. If you have grudge against anyone in the presence of God, throw it away in Jesus' name. Tell the Lord, Lord, I will bless that person. I will do good to that person. I will never have any grudge against anyone. I will throw it away in Jesus' name. Start to bless that person. Be free from all these things. And if you are a person who wants to win the race successfully, you need to be temperate. You need to forego. Throw it away in Jesus' name. The third point. The faith. The faith to finish well. To possess the price. Verse 26. I therefore so run not as uncertainly. So fight I not as the one that beat the air. But I keep under my body. And bring it, to, bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means. When I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Shall we all read this verse together? I therefore so run not as uncertainly, so fight I not as the one that beat the air, but I keep under my body, bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I want you to look at the first phrase, of verse 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. I run with certainty. I have faith within me. My faith, my faith helps me to move forward. Faith plays an important role in our focus and in our forfeit. This comes third. Our faith always faces a fight. Why do we focus on the Lord? Why do we forego? Because of the faith. We don't run with uncertainty. We run with certainty. Look at what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. We all know this, as yet, shall, yet we shall read it. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. Look at the fight and faith. Fight and faith. That's what we find in verse 26. 1 Corinthians 9.26 There's a faith and there's also a fight. I therefore so run not as uncertainty. Certainly so fight I. Here he says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept my faith. The enemy is all out fighting against your faith. Bible says in Luke's gospel chapter 18 verse 8. When the son of man comes, shall he find faith? Because faith faces the worst battle ever. John the apostle in his epistle writes like this. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith experiences a victory. That means it encounters a fight and it overcomes that fight and it becomes victorious. Dear child of God, the enemy is working out, you know, you know, playing, you know putting all sorts of doubts in your mind. You're believing the Lord. You're, you're a believer. What good have you experienced? 
you are praising the lord you are fasting and praying seeking the lord worshiping the lord you are not blessed as that that unbeliever you don't have these things what that person has he doesn't seek the lord he doesn't worship the lord he doesn't focus on the lord he doesn't forego for the lord but still he has all those things but you are struggling hard even to find you and to achieve even to have 1% of what that person has you are in a rented house you are still struggling never give room to all those things probably you may say in the body of christ in the church that person is growing up very well but i am not what's the point what's a big deal in praying to god spending time with the word never give room to these discouraging words the enemy is trying to attack your faith if you lose your faith you're gone what did jesus say to peter peter the satan has asked me permission to sift you but i have prayed that your faith fail not the lord god who has called you is faithful do you know something your survival here your presence here in this place that is the greatest testimony of god's power and god's sovereign authority had anyone gone through the path that you are going through or you have gone through probably they wouldn't be here or probably they would be in a mental asylum you have faced hardest crisis worstest storm the worst storm ever in your life now the enemy tries to attack your faith you have you may the enemy may say you have all sorts of qualification but you're not moving even an inch forward you have all sorts of abilities but those people who don't have are climbing up much sooner than they expect but you're still far behind never give room to all these things let not your faith waver he says i therefore so run, run not at, as uncertainly i have a hope i have a hope david ran into the troop he ran he ran before goliath why he knew that there was a cause he had a faith he had the faith on the lord that he had there was a cause there was a cause How many of you are listening to the word? Dear child of God, never give room to doubt in your mind. It is not over until the Lord says it is over. It is not what you decide of you about your future. Tell the Lord, Lord, I believe you. I believe your word. If the Lord says, if the Lord, if you hear the Lord speaking to you, my son, I'm going to bless you. that means you have a future if you hear the lord speaking to you i'm going to use you bright days are ahead of you never think about your lost strength lost days probably you may face the weakness of your old age but still you are hearing but even now you are hearing the lord speaking to you i'm going to use you i have chosen you My purpose is not fulfilled yet. Stick on to the word of the Lord. Have faith. Faith to persevere. Faith to persevere. And adding to this faith, one thing that touched my heart from this verse is this. He says, with this faith, he says in verse 27, I keep under my body and bring it to subjection. faith and purity always go hand in hand when it comes to experiencing miracle and wonders in our lives he had faith and he also kept his body bible says i keep under my body i buffet it faith and purity leads to success number 1 focus number 2 foregoing number 3 faith faith with purity that is what is important in first samuel chapter 4 i'm going to cl- close my time is up first samuel chapter 
we read about an, an incident israel they were against the philistines and these israelites just to boost their confidence to have faith they bring the ark of the covenant into the battle ground when the enemy here when the enemy heard the loud noise because they brought the ark into the camp they thought to themselves what why is why are they shouting and they come to know that the ark of the covenant has come in the midst of the battle ground now their faith is high they have the faith but they were defeated terribly they faced the worst defeat and the worst of all the ark of the covenant was captured by the philistines why they had the faith but they failed why they had the faith but they could not complete the race why the reason was there was no purity there was no purity the child of god tell the lord lord as i'm clicking on to your word as i'm focusing on you as i'm foregoing i will be ensure that i am faithful to you i will ensure that i will that i live a holy life that i will ensure that my conscience is clean we may not be perfect but we must make sure that our conscience is clear our conscience is pure the lord expects pure conscience god expects pure conscience bible says in jude chapter 1 verse 20 beloved brother building your building up yourselves on your most holy faith it's not ordinary faith it's holy faith it's holy faith job he believed is god but he kept himself from sinning against the lord with his lips and that's the reason why he finished his race well that's the reason why he was successful dear child of god never give in to any presumptuous sin never give give room to any sin any secret faults never give room to any great transgressions it's all starts with error small error never give room to all these things would you tell the lord lord at any cost i will never quit my spiritual walk with you i will never compromise with this world i will live a holy life i will make sure that i buffet my body take i control my body you know flesh comes before the spirit we need to control the flesh the lord expects us to take control over our flesh and ensure purity faith and purity leads to success i shared with you three thoughts the focus the four go and number 3 the faith faith with purity focus only on the bride of our bride groom never focus on blessings or other people focus on the lord forego keeping eternity eternal things incorruptible crown in your mind have faith with purity with purity shall we all read these verses before we could close second corinthians chapter 4 16 to 18 for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal we faint not even though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day day by day day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory you may be going through crisis struggle facing battles the reproach is still there but still you're holding on to the truth if you are that person this morning the lord says 
weight of eternal glory is waiting for you weight of eternal glory is waiting for you never give room to depression discouragement focus on the glory the lord you had you and me in his mind and his last word was the bright let us focus on the bright let us forego for his bright let us have faith and with purity march on and win the prize in jesus name this morning church what is up to feed the presence of god is in this place you have a purpose in life you have a race to run and god wants us to run that race we are three points this morning of focus of a forego of a faith think of peter that day when he was walking on the water fixed up his eyes upon the lord god he was walking victoriously over the water but the moment he took his eyes off the lord god he began to sink deep down in that water god wants us to focus on him as long as you rise up upon the lord your god you can walk victoriously over every situation over every circumstance and god wants us to forego things there are many things that are holding on to you think of a runner running a race he doesn't run with a lot of baggages but he just runs with a very very simple uniform many times we are running a race and many baggages we can the things of the world the cares of the world are weighing us down that we are not able to run our spiritual race the bible says in the book of colossians chapter 3 verse 2 that we need to set our affections on things above not on the things of this earth if we are going to care for the things of this earth that's going to weigh us down and that's not going to help us to run the race victoriously but let's set our affections on the things of evil of heaven not on the things of the earth so much we are so much bothered about things of the earth they are temporal but we have something up there in heaven which is for eternal and hold on to your faith church this one thing the devil is against you is your faith but we need to have faith in god the bible says he that has called you is a faithful god every eye closed in the presence of god i believe god has spoken to us this morning this earth is not our dwelling place but god has a place prepared up there in heaven for each one of us your purpose is not to dwell here but to be with the lord god for eternity up there in heaven and we need to run that race as the bible says in second timothy chapter 4:7 Timothy the Paul says I have fought a good fight I finished my course I have kept the faith Can you say as the apostle Paul said I fought a good fight I finished my course I have kept my faith For I know one thing I have a place up there in heaven My dear brother sister God has gone before us to prepare a place for each one of us You start the race it's up to you to run the race and endure to the end all the hardships that you are going through as we heard this morning <clears throat> a light affliction for a weight of glory press on in faith for god is waiting there press on keep pressing on for god is waiting for each one of us there to receive us up there in glory but i need to run my race with all endurance looking on the jesus the author and the finisher of my faith forgo things that are holding on to you and hold on to the faith that God has given you you can be assured that if i close my eyes here in earth i will open up my eyes there with god for eternity keep pressing on for god is on the other side of faith remember god is on the other side of faith let's run our race looking unto him forgoing everything that is holding us from running our race and put our faith and trust in the god who is a faithful god the bible said the one who has called you is faithful run the race that you may win god has not called us to falter and fail but god has called us to win the race and we can win the race when we have jesus with us as long as our eyes are fixed upon the lord your god so take a decision this morning church focus on the lord your god forgo things that are holding on to you and have faith in a god who is so faithful you can be assured that you will win the race that God has set before us because we have a lively hope in Christ Jesus thank you lord
shall we pray heavenly father we just want to thank and praise you this morning we thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship god coming to your presence to worship you to listen to your word of father and we thank you for speaking to each one of us this morning in a very personal way we know one thing god you have a race that is set before us and we know one thing that we are we have a goal that is set before us help us to end you while we run this race god all that we need is your help because we do acknowledge one thing god without you we cannot do anything of father all that we need is your presence and help us lord to take delight in your presence and to run the race god with you hallelujah because it is you god who will enable us to complete the race that you have begun for each one of us this morning we pray a blessing upon your people in our hearts and we pray god that you will bless your people this morning with good health and strength divine peace and joy father i pray the blessing of god will rest upon them oh god and may your abiding presence go along with them father we just want to thank you once again for this wonderful time of service a wonderful time of fellowship praising and worshiping you and listening to your word and now may your presence go with us a god and let your name alone be glorified we humble ourselves before you this morning we vow to give you all the praise and worship father dear for we ask all these things in the wonderful name of our lord and savior jesus christ and all god's people said amen